I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do, still do have uh, the old compulsions. And coming next, as we continue, Dahmer talks about how his obsessions became more and more out of control. I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any, uh, any satisfaction. To protect ourselves against monsters like Jeffrey Dahmer, it is important to know how they think, how they operate. Dahmer is an intelligent man, someone who could live just about anywhere. Nancy now continues her interview. You know, Jeffrey Dahmer says as time went on, his mind became more and more warped, and yet he was clever enough to continue to elude police and lure young men to his apartment. We should warn you, the details are very graphic. I started having these obsessive thoughts uh, when I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power, uh, complete dominance. Uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement, uh, fear, pleasure all mixed together. Jeffrey Dahmer fulfilled his fantasies by murdering and dismembering 17 young men. In time, his desires became more extreme, his deeds more grotesque. Listen to him talk about the most unnatural things in the most matter-of-fact of ways. That's when you realize that none of it has touched him. I was uh, branching out. That's when the cannibalism started, eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. At, at, for, at first it was just curiosity, and then it became compulsive. Then I tried to uh, keep the person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Um, by uh, injecting... Uh, first uh, dilute acid solution into their brain or uh, hot water and uh, it never did completely work. Could someone like you be stopped? Could you be helped? No, I, I was I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any uh, any satisfaction. He became so warped by his evil impulses that he even took a victim's head with him to work at the Ambrosia Chocolate Factory. I kept the, uh, the mummified uh, head and skull of one of the victims in uh, a, a carrying case in my locker at work. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Jeffrey Dahmer exhibited some disturbing behavior early on. He began drinking heavily as a teenager, dropped out of college, was arrested for indecent exposure, disorderly conduct, and fondling a 13-year-old boy. Tragically, one of his murder victims would be that boy's brother. Do you know what started it? Was there any kind of incident that you can remember? To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Not uh, parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. His macabre 13-year crime spree finally ended when this man, Tracy Edwards, brought the police to the infamous apartment. Like the others, he had gone there with the promise of money. He was listening to my heart because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. I hit him and I, and I ran. What was the turning point for you that made you suddenly realize that you had done something terribly wrong, something you should be sorry for? It was uh, the night of the arrest. I have no memory of what happened uh, during the six hours before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment. I heard a knock on the door and the police were there uh, with, with the last victim. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. I was 
my mind was in a haze, I s sort of pointed to the bedroom, and that's where they uh, found the pictures. And they, they yelled, cuff them. I was uh, handcuffed. And uh, it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide, hide uh, my actions anymore. The, the best route was to help, help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. When it was revealed that most of the victims were black or homosexual, people in Milwaukee were incensed. Many felt that was why he went after them and why the police didn't seem to care when their families reported them missing. Ten of your 17 victims were black. Uh, were they racially motivated? It, it was not racially motivated. It was not uh, sexual preference. It was just to find an obsession with uh, the best looking young man I could find. While you just heard him say that his sexual preference had nothing to do with the killings, no. he has not come no. to terms with his homosexuality. Never understood it. There was no use trying to fight it because I, I couldn't rid myself of it. It was, it was too powerful and persistent. Do you dislike it? Yes, it's caused a lot of problems for me. A lot of conflicts and uh, unanswered questions. The conflicts remain with him, and so do his compulsions. But in prison, he finally cannot act on his savage desires. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me. Boy, does he come across as cold-blooded. Did you see any remorse? Well, he says he's sorry, Bill, but I'm not sure he knows what that means. Tomorrow he talks about how he disassociated himself from his crimes and what lengths he went to to hide them. We will see you tomorrow, Nancy. Thank you. And inside Edition, Jeffrey Dahmer spoke for the first time about his passion for killing. Today, Inside Edition continues the exclusive interview with Dahmer, and what he says will shock you. It's the interview the nation is talking about. Serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer speaking for the first time. Why was it so easy, though, for you to hide it all? I bought security systems, uh, installed them myself in the apartment. I had a uh, video camera in the corner of the room. Today, Nancy Glass continues her remarkable interview with serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> was home alone when an intruder turned her evening into a night of terror. What would you do if a thug broke into your house? Could you handle yourself? Coming up, a harrowing story about a woman saved by 911. But first, reaction to the words of Jeffrey Dahmer is worldwide. It is one thing to read about his crimes, quite another to hear how dispassionately this killer talks about his grisly deeds. Nancy Glass joins us now to continue her exclusive interview with Dahmer. Nancy. Bill, Jeffrey Dahmer is now in jail serving 15 consecutive life terms for his terrible crimes. Wisconsin does not have the death penalty. In prison, he is getting therapy, but he says it hasn't helped him. He spends his time reading the Bible and volumes of mail. I asked him if he was afraid of what might happen in prison, and he said, no, what difference does it make if someone comes after him because he doesn't care if he lives or dies. <laughs> He prowled gay bars, picking up men to seduce and murder. Jeffrey Dahmer says his desire to control and possess his victims drove him to inhuman acts on the living and the dead. He was a killing machine out of control. How should you be punished? Well, there's no question that I, that I deserve the death penalty. I've, uh, I've wondered myself why I, uh, I don't have the death penalty. That, that's what I deserve. I deserve death. What do you think happens after you die? Right. That's the big unknown. I've thought of, uh, I've had thoughts of, of suicide, uh, but I just uh, haven't been able to uh, carry them through. So I don't know what the future will hold. 
In the past, Jeffrey Dahmer was very sure of what he wanted and how to get it. Seventeen young men would die at his hands. Later, when he made this confession to...